Here's something weird. All the coal in the world was made at the same time. It was all made during one brief period of geological history. It started abruptly 360 million years ago and it stopped abruptly 300 million years ago. Like, if you drill a hole into the ground, you'll pass through geological layers or strata. It's like traveling back in time. And eventually you'll reach the coal strata. And that strata is in the same position everywhere around the world because all the coal in the world was made at the same time. But why? Well, to understand, you need to know about the nutrient cycle. Plants pull nutrients from the soil and from the air and combine them into larger molecules that they use to live. And then when plants die, they decompose. Those larger molecules break down into smaller molecules and those nutrients are returned to the soil so that new plants can grow and use them. Except that plants can't decompose on their own. You need to bring in these decomposers, basically fungi and bacteria that are good at breaking down these larger structures into small nutritious pieces that return to the soil. And they derive some energy from that and that's how they live. So that's the nutrient cycle. So let's go way back in time to a period before there were trees. So there are plants, but there aren't trees yet. And some plant comes along that figures out or invents, right, through the process, I'm anthropomorphizing, but through the process of evolution, they come up with the ability to make some molecules called lignins. And lignins are a revolution. They're amazing. They're these structural molecules. They're the molecules that give trees their strength. It's the essence of wood. And they confer an amazing advantage on the plants that can produce lignins. And so this ability spreads all around the world really quickly. Suddenly you've got woody plants and trees everywhere. It's actually quite a good analogy for the human invention of plastic. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Let's just put it in everything. And then, oh my God, why won't it go away? So these lignins are novel. Nothing has been seen like it before on Earth. And it's novel to the fungi and bacteria as well. They've never seen anything like it. They don't know how to decompose it. So these new trees, when they die and fall over, they just lie there. The bacteria and the fungi look at it and go, I don't know what to do with these lignins. Never seen it before. And so these dead trees just pile up on top of each other, they get squished. It sticks around for long enough undecomposed by fungi and bacteria that don't know what to do with it, that it turns into fossils. It turns into coal. And then 60 million years later, some bacteria or fungus figures out, through the process of evolution, how to break down lignins. And again, it's a revolution. It confers an amazing advantage onto the bacteria and fungi that can do it because it's a new source of food. So it spreads like wildfire around the world and essentially cuts off the production of coal. It's probably my favorite example of the way that the geological layers of the earth can tell us interesting stories about our ancient history. But here's a related question. Where does a tree come from? Like, where does the mass of a tree come from? And you might think, well, trees grow out of the ground, so the mass of a tree is slowly pulled out of the ground as it grows, but that's not true. Like a tiny bit of the mass of a tree comes from the ground, but most of it comes from the air because most of a tree is made of carbon. So trees draw carbon dioxide through their leaves and it pulls the carbon dioxide molecules apart, separates them into carbon and oxygen. It holds onto the carbon, it adds it to the structure of its body and it releases the oxygen as a gas. And that process is driven by energy from the sun. So in a sense, a tree is locking up solar energy into those carbon bonds by separating the carbon from oxygen. And that's why coal is such an effective fuel because if you want to release that locked up solar energy, all you have to do is reunite the carbon inside with the oxygen in the air that it was separated from in the first place. And that's what we do. We burn coal to produce carbon dioxide. And that's a problem, we know this. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and climate change is a real problem. So what do we do? Well, we can, and I believe we should, try to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we produce. But maybe at the same time, we should be looking at ways to draw carbon dioxide out of the air in the way that trees do. In fact, maybe we should be planting trees so that they can pull the carbon dioxide out of the air for us. 
except that we're not doing that. We're cutting down more trees than we plant. This is just a short video. It doesn't have a sponsor, but there is something personally really important to me that I want to tell you about. It's about the largest YouTube collaboration in history, and I'm really proud to be a part of it. It's all about planting trees, and there's loads of other YouTubers involved. In fact, this probably isn't the first time you're hearing this message because all these videos are coming out at exactly the same time. The goal is to plant 20 million trees. It's called Team Trees. Each tree costs a dollar, so we need to raise $20 million. It's a crazy idea, but I think it's possible. I wanted to get involved because I wanted to add my voice to the chorus, but also I thought if I could tell an interesting science story, that might be persuasive. If you think you can give, that's amazing. The link is in the description, it's teamtrees.org. There's also a donate button there as well to make it super easy. Any amount that you can give is really appreciated. All the ad revenue that comes to me from this video will go straight to Team Trees as well. If you feel like you can't donate, that's okay. Maybe think about spreading the word a little bit. I think this is achievable and what an amazing thing to be part of. I hope you want to be part of it too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to donate and I'll see you next time. What?